need another hole in the head. He's a good man. That doesn't mean he's suitable to be president. Since when does just being a good man enough to run a country of this size with this kind of economy? The man has never run a business. So far as I know, he never created a product. He's a fine surgeon. But that doesn't translate to being a great uh, leader, a great organizer, does it? You need to be a great organizer, by the way, and a great politician to lead a country. And as you can see, Obama's a great organizer and a great politician. That's why he's leading the country over the cliff. Trump is a businessman. Whether you like him or not is irrelevant. He knows how to build and run businesses. And I've said in my last book, run America like a business. Then maybe we'll have some a solvency in this nation again. Now you say, well, it's more than a business. A nation is more than a business. And I agree with you. A business does not have to provide social services. I get that. Although in the socialist environment in which they're living today, many businesses are many states in that regard. And the, and the government's forcing them to run social services. But predominantly, they're not... Uh, uh, social service agencies. So a government has certain responsibilities. It has inherent uh, uh, debt that a, a business does not have. So there are differences I'm aware of that I'm not speaking specifically run the country like a business. But I would say putting some business practices in place a as the president would be kind of important such as tariffs on goods coming in from China and other places that are trading us into, these, into, the, into the Stone Age. Those are important points that a businessman understands that crackpot bureaucrats don't understand, that people have been trapped behind uh, bureaucracies their whole lives don't understand. And uh, unfortunately, there are too many of them in talk radio as well. People who've never built a business, run a business, they don't know the first thing about business. They think because they make a lot of money yakking their heads off that they're smart. Well, they may be smart. Smart enough to bamboozle the public, but it doesn't make them a businessman able to run the country. And speaking of talk radio hosts, I don't know if I can mention his name, but I'll just say it in general. There is a talk show host who poses as Joe Sixpack. He uh, establishes himself as a regular guy. He looks like a regular guy, sounds like a regular guy, talks like a regular guy. But he owns something like 18,000 apartments in Atlanta, Georgia. And I said, well, good for him, I said originally. You know, what the heck could be built an empire like that? And then I learned that most of them are Section 8 housing. Now, he poses as a conservative, rails against big government. And I say to myself, wait a minute, if he owns 18,000 or so apartment units in Atlanta, Georgia, and they're Section 8 housing, who's he renting them to? Why, that would be homeless people? That would be illegal immigrants? And who's he collecting his checks from? Why, the very government that he rails against every day. And I think, by the way, that one of the greatest... Uh, I would say one of the most shocking stories the left could do, and I would go along with it because I'm an independent, would be to expose all the people on the right who rail against big government, who in fact are extremely wealthy as a result of big government contracts. Start with the Section 8 housing owned by a talk show host who claims to be Joe Sixpack. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. You remember America when this song was popular. We still... I would say you're a member of the Savage Nation. If you don't know what the song is about, well, I'm sorry to tell you you're not. I mean, you could try to get in if you want. The club is full right now, but we have some membership, <laughs> some waiting uh, list for the memberships on the Savage Nation. I'm putting a call out now to uh, um, antagonists on the left to listen to this show, because I got nothing to hide. That's the beauty of me. You say, why are you so bold and arrogant? Why do you talk like that? Really, I have nothing to hide. But there are those who are hiding behind the American flag and patriotism who are complete and utter liars and phonies. One of them makes about $30 million a year espousing the Joe Sixpack rhetoric every day on television and radio. He owns about 18,000 apartment units in Atlanta, Georgia, or in the environs of Atlanta, Georgia. Most, if not all, of these apartments are Section 8 housing. He is a slumlord. I welcome Vanity Fair the television show Vice, run by that lout, whatever his name is, that evil man from television land, I don't know his name, Bill uh, Mocker, Bill Mocker, Bill Mocker, to investigate uh, this uh, 
pseudo-conservative who makes all this money off the backs of the poor people who believe in him. Investigate all of those on the right and follow their money and see if any of the money comes from the very same big government that they rail against. It's time to uncouple reality from fantasy or else there's no chance to take back this government. In other words, if people who are railing against big government are in fact feasting on the big government, then what chance do we have? The answer is very, very slim chances indeed. It's a worthy investigation. I don't own Section 8 housing. I've got no ties to any government income other than my, I should say, Social Security check, which I earned by working since I'm six years old. I actually started contributing since I'm, a, I don't know, how old, 17, whatever it was. But I've been working since I'm six. So a long time that I put money into this system. So I get the check. I add it to my money. I do what I want with it. It's my business. You didn't give it to me. I earned it. In fact, it's a paltry amount compared to what I put into Social Security. Nevertheless, as our number two comes to a conclusion on this launch day of Government Zero, I want to thank everyone out there, each and every one of you listening to this show, who went out to the bookstores today to show your commitment and your loyalty Yes to me, Michael Savage, and of course to America, but I know many of you are doing it because you love me and you want to support me. That's all I can say. I know the zeitgeist of it, and thank you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Where'd that message lead to? Drug, sex, and rock and roll. If it feels good, do it. Why not do it in the road? Where'd that lead us? Take a look at Barry in the White House. Barry from Honolulu, that's where it led us. Welcome to the Savage Nation. So many news stories. I mean, you get sick reading them. American warship sails past island and challenge to China. Now, that is one of the most ludicrous headlines I've ever seen in my life. A destroyer is sent to challenge the Chinese Navy. That's typical of the sorority. That's like taking a uh, nail file to a gunfight. They're sending a single small destroyer. I mean, it's armed to the teeth, but you know very well that the the launch tubes are probably filled with cotton on the Barry. I don't think they would want to spend the money on actual missiles. So they send the guided missile destroyer USS Lassen to, to sail past an artificial island created by China in the South China Sea in order to show that uh, they're we're really there, our presence is really there. Now, if you really wanted to send the signal, you send a carrier a task force. That's if they still have one left. If they haven't fired all of the men who can run a carrier task force, I wouldn't know. I mean, after Benghazi, they fired many men who could run carriers because they uh, knew the truth of Benghazi. But, yeah, you get the picture. You get the picture. So China complained. They said the move damaged U.S.-China relations and regional peace. You know how that works. That's like the uh, Muslim front group saying that whenever you stand up to the creeping Sharia law, you're uh, what, uh, some, something phobic. I don't know. Just put slot in whatever you want in front of the word phobic. And you can find the, the proper answer. This is probably sinophobic. Oh, yeah, yeah, sinophobia. That'll be used soon. Sinophobia. It's a sign of sinophobia. Something only Seinfeld could understand. Uh, putting a uh, naval destroyer in Chinese waters where they're building uh, islands in the middle of other people's, uh, you know, territorial areas, is a form of xenophobia on the part of Obama. And that would be a laugh. China claims it entered its 12-mile territorial limit around Subai Reef in the Spratly Islands archipelago. I like the word archipelago. Most people think it's archipelago. But it's not. It's like arch, like fallen arches. Arch <laughs> it's a fallen archipelago. <laughs> The, Spr <laughs> the Spratly Islands are a f fallen archipelago that was uh, regenerated by the Chinese uh, into the reefs and the islets and atolls in order to build up a uh, forward, let us say, military area for themselves. 
Now, why he would send the single destroyer is obvious, because it's not a serious challenge to China's supremacy of the seas in that area. It's that simple. All right. Well, let's go on to the next, sir. Uh, female guards barred from transporting Gitmo detainees by court order. Now, you talk about a country that's bending over backwards to comply with Sharia law, which is the most vile law ever imagined for the freedom of women I've never seen. Senior defense officials, who are all capitulated cowards, have capitulated to the demands of the Muslim fanatics in uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, who have said that female guards cannot transport the detainees suspected of being involved in the September 11th attack. That's because women are dirty to Muslims like this. You don't know that. I mean, dogs are dirty to them. Well, look the other way on that one. That tells you an awful lot. A military judge issued an order in January prohibiting female guards from transporting the defendants, including Khalid uh, Sheikh Mohammed, after they refused to meet with defense lawyers and complained that any physical contact with unrelated women violated their Muslim beliefs. Ah, oh, what a bunch of garbage. Muslim beliefs. They're raping and murdering girls in the Middle East. What Muslim beliefs are you talking about? You buy into this crap? Put them on chains and drag them into court. The ruling by Army Colonel James Pohl was meant to deal with their complaints. With their complaints. Can you imagine a military run by a bunch of sissies like this that given to one of the world's worst terrorists? Do you realize how sexist and vile this is and what a violation this is of our nation's sovereignty? But look, what's the point of getting outraged over this? It's just one of many that is ongoing now under the regime that is currently decimating the United States of America and the world for that matter. Which leads us to the happy days of here again theme of today's show, Government Zero, published today in the bookstores today. People are flocking and buying it. And over the coming days and weeks, we'll talk about the chapters, Government Zero. Maybe I should tell you what it is. Or Zero Leadership or things like that. I don't want to read it to you now. I did an interview this morning. I, we don't have the Newsmax TV interview, do we? We do? Yeah, we have it. I think it's worth playing a little snippet of it because it was done with Steve Molesberg this morning. And since I had to get up and put on a suit and a tie and uh, get the lights up on the Skype machine, I don't know how it looked. Where is it right now? What site is it on? Is it on my site? World Net Why would World Net Daily publish Newsmax? I, I don't get that one. Let me see it. Uh, it is up there? I don't know where it is. Hey, Michael Savage. No, that's their article. GOP not divided. It's compromised. That's their own article. But I don't know where this video is. Anyway, let's do this. Let's play a snippet of the of the Newsmax interview that I did this morning uh, with Steve Molesberg. I want to hear it myself. Play it, please. You are a borders culture, uh, borders language culture guy. So to see the uh, title of the book, Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture, uh, right away, I know it's not too optimistic a, a scenario you're painting. Well, here's the thing. It's not just another book. It has solutions. It has the ammunition people need to convert a husband, a wife, a neighbor, a child who's been brainwashed in the government schools. They don't really know what's happening to this country. The machine is so powerful, Steve, as you well know. People have no idea. Remember the story came out about two weeks ago that the EPA spent $60 million a year on public relations? Yeah. External and internal. Okay, if, the, if a single department of Barack Hussein Obama spends $60 million to put out propaganda, what are they spending to make Barry look like a great patriotic commander-in-chief? A yeah. billion dollars a year? $200 million a year? Take a look at the real story. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, but I don't want to go into Obama bashing. He bashes himself every time he speaks, if you really listen to what he's doing. No, but you present a 40, as you mentioned, there are solutions, a 40-point plan to take this country back to the original intent and the ways the founders intended us to be. I don't know about the founders. You know, this is another misnomer, and I, I don't want to split hairs here. Everyone keeps going back to the founders. And there's a little discomfort for me there for one reason. The principles were fantastic, but I think we all have to agree it was a little different, the country. Very homogeneous, predominantly white people, Native Americans who were disenfranchised, didn't vote. Slaves who were here didn't vote, right? Landholders, mainly white men, God bless them, they built the nation. And a small land area, small population. The rules are great if you are a religious person who believes in the Bible, follows the Bible, and I mean the Ten Commandments. I don't mean putting women in burqas and performing sexual mutilations on your young girls and blowing things up. I'm talking about the religion of peace. 
called Christianity. That's one story. But now we're living in a pluralistic 